Parshas Bahar Chamishi. So this Aliyah deals with, again, if a person doesn't have the proper faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he didn't keep Shemitah, so Hashem took away, for he was forced to sell his land, to stay Achuza. He still didn't have faith, so now he has to sell his Bata Yarechema, he has to sell his house in a walled land. After that, what happens? Torah goes on and tells us, Al tikach meitoy neshech v'tarmis. Don't take, don't charge someone ribis. Kliyakar says that this is a continuation of the parsha. Why does the Torah mind, why does Hashem care if someone charges ribis? It's the way of the land. You buy a house, you get a mortgage, everyone's happy. No one cries when they get approval for their mortgage. So why can't I charge someone ribis? It's, it's the way of business. Kliyakar says, you know why Hashem doesn't want you charging ribis? because he really doesn't want a person collecting ribis, because then you have a fixed income. If you have a fixed income, so I don't need Hashem. I get every month my 10%. I, have no, I don't need Hashem to help me. Hashem wants you to put your money in prakmati, he says. Put your money in the markets, and then all of a sudden you're praying to Hashem every day. How's the market been today? As we've seen very recently, you really have to put your faith in Hashem. Is That's the main reason why Hashem doesn't want you charging ribis, is because he wants you to put your faith and trust in Hashem. So I'll tell you an interesting thought I had. Getting back to that. You have a house in a walled city. There's a Mishnah, I believe it's an Erchen, that says that if someone sells his house in a walled city, it's ribis. It's really, you're, you're violating the prohibition of ribis, except the Torah allowed it. Why is that? Let's think about it. I sell you my house in a walled city, and comes a year later, you pay me back for the house. In the meantime, I lived in your house for a year. So technically, I lent you $100,000, I purchased the house, but that's not a purchase. A year later, I'm getting back my $100,000, and I had a very nice house for a year. That's my interest. So the Mishnah says that it's pure rivis, except the Torah allowed it. Why is the Torah allowing someone to charge rivis? Two psukim later, I'll take ach don't take rivis. So I was thinking, perhaps, why did this person lose his house? He didn't keep Shemitah. He didn't trust in Hashem. He didn't trust in Hashem. He was forced to sell his house. The mitzvah of ribis, again, according to the Koyakar, is a mitzvah all about trusting in Hashem. Don't have that fixed income. Trust in Hashem. The mitzvah of ribis does not protect this guy with the Bata Yarei who didn't trust Hashem and sold and dealt wrongly with Peres Shvias. He violated Shvias. He didn't trust in Hashem. A mitzvah of ribis, that the entire foundation is all about trusting Hashem, is not going to protect him. And therefore, you're able to take his Bata Yari You're able to charge him ribis, live in his house for that year, and charge him ribis. He's not going to be protected by a mitzvah who the entire foundation is all about keeping, keeping trust in Hashem and keeping the Shemitah. Thank <laughs> you.